Hey, this is Chuck, and you are listening to Fans with Bands, the podcast where we talk to the fans and the bands they dig about life, music, and whatever the hell else we want to talk about. Today on Fans with Bands, we are talking to Kruthu. Check it out. Hey, this is Chuck with Fans with Bands, and I am talking to Matt and Ryan from the band Kruthu. And joining us are fans, Matt, Eric, Paul, Brandon, and Matt. How you guys doing? Very good. Good. Excellent. So I usually like to start off with the fans to find out, like, how did you become fans of Kruthu? And I'm going to start with, uh, how about Paul? Thanks. Um, well, I had the pleasure of uh, catching a great show, I think, back in... 2017 maybe i think um there was a gig at uh, pj lager's house and uh the lineup was crew through spirit adrift and or actually crew through then temple of void and spirit adrift um nice and so killer lineup and um uh i was glad because i got one, I got the pass from the wife to go to the show. So <laughs> starting good already. <laughs> and then um, uh, was pleased because, you know, obviously sometimes, you know, the first bands, obviously they don't get, uh, they don't get the whole draw that the headliner will yeah. get. But I was pleased that I got to be there in time to catch their set. Um, and uh, just love, uh, you know, Ryan's voice is so resonant and, um <clears throat> Uh, they, they were really tight and have a great, uh, you know, a traditional doom metal Sabbathy kind of vibe. Um, yeah. Also, a cool. Uh, I noticed in listening to the latest record, there's a there's a great kind of swagger. I think to a lot of the songs, um, mm-hmm. a shuffling kind of you know beat kind of thing. So, um, yeah. So I, I just uh, I was uh, I had a great time listening to their set. Um, I got to talk afterwards to David, the guitar player. Uh, for a little bit after the show and talk a little shop and traded uh, uh, an EP that my own project did a couple of years ago. And uh, so I was just uh, all along a bit exciting to follow the development of, of crew through his music. And, uh, and it just randomly, I think, you know, earlier this year when I had checked in with them about what was going on, heard out, realized, Oh, you have a new album coming out. So uh, it was great timing. Very cool. Very cool. Uh, how about uh, Matt Connell or Cornell? Sorry. Um, I've known Ryan. Ryan, one of Ryan's early bands played at my high school. Oh, wow. Back in, what was that, 93? <laughs> yeah, it, that's Misty in the background. I've known Misty since I was in seventh grade. Yeah. I mean, yeah, long time. Yeah. So um I I've you know been around for seen Ryan play with lots of different bands. But uh I mean with Crusu, it was the first time I heard that first album. It was the same sort of experience I gave myself, or I say when like I listened to like uh Master of Puppets the first time, where it was me and the headphones and that was that was it. Fantastic. nothing else around me mattered at that point. <laughs> it was that same sort of experience the first time i heard that first crew through album and i it was on repeat i swear for like three months awesome that's fantastic uh how about uh eric uh so i'd like to build on what matt just said that i was with matt fry and i heard this album he said listen to this thing i was blown away it was so good and that was that first album it was rough demos and we were able to just sit there and talk about it but it just it felt exactly the way it was supposed to feel nice very nice. yeah and just to add on that the way ryan sings on these albums it's almost as if he's a storyteller sometimes it's almost like i feel like i'm sitting around a campfire and somebody's telling the story as it's uh being sung yeah for sure i mean that is definitely something that comes through strong those are it's not just i mean fantastic songwriting but stories yes really awesome stories so yeah i agree with you guys totally 
Um, let's jump over to Brandon. Uh, how did you become a fan of Kruthu? Uh So I went to uh, Fuzz Fest. I think it was Fuzz Fest 4 yes. uh, in Fuzz Ann Fest. Arbor. <laughs> yeah. And so I, I, I heard about it and I was thrilled to check out all these bands. So I was there every night. I think it was the second night Kruthu played and like just right away the, their sound just hit me and there's that's exactly the kind of stuff I like to hear it made the whole you know all the bands were great but I, I remember they stuck out in my mind more than most of the other ones and so I've been uh, following them ever since very cool very cool uh, how about Matt Hawley uh, I've, I've been friends with uh, Matt Fry for a while um, and then I can't quite put it as good as Eric or uh, Matt slash Nancy there, but um, <laughs> the, <laughs> Matt was uh, explaining this band he was in crew through, um, trying to explain it in words. And then yeah. uh, when we actually heard the album, then everything clicked. I was like, oh, yes, exactly as you described. Very cool. And uh, Daniel. Hi, how are you? Good. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Are you sorry, uh, um, I I connect from Chile. Uh, my English is not so good, but I try to explain my how I know Cruzu. Uh, really, is a interesting story. Very closer, you know, very short. Uh, I have a friend here in Chile. Uh, show me the band. They say, say, hey, you know Cruzu? You like the metal bands? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> And it really if, uh, love it. Uh, first view, you know, <laughs> of awesome. sound is uh, is really incredible. Uh, I have uh, the vinyl and the CD uh, coming soon. I buy the band kind of the last album, really amazing. And I think it's uh, it, for me the first time I listen a band with the classic sound mm -hmm. of doom metal, but with a very uh, powerful influence of blues and beautiful vocal lines. Not only not only the melodies, if the uh, I won't say effective in English, but they, it's like a, a long words or many words in the same line. Yes, you know? yes. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's very complicated. I think yeah, I, I, I think it's the, it's the most special uh, ingredient, you know, of the of the sound of Cruzu. It's really it's amazing. <laughs> I love guys. Uh, it's uh, it's really fantastic. Uh, see you. <laughs> awesome. By Zoom, you know, is a congrats. You know, not only for the last album, for the uh, for for everything. It's a it's a really fantastic uh, release album in the middle of the, this pandemic. You know, is a yeah. Congrats again. Yeah, I love so much <laughs> your music. <laughs> That's thank you very much, Daniel. That's fantastic. Awesome. Uh, so Matt Ryan, um. You know, uh, Daniel was talking about the album that you guys just put out uh, in the pandemic. I, I think it was in the fall, like September. Uh, I'm probably going to butcher the name of the of the album, so you can feel free to correct me. <laughs> it's the second album. Uh, uh, is it Athru Ath Krutha? Athru uh, Krutha. Athru Krutha. Very cool. Well, I, I didn't know. Athru <laughs> Athru. Uh, 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 Atru Kruta. Okay. And is that uh, Gaelic as well as the, the name? Yes. Very cool. I believe it, it means, means trans to transform into. Yeah. Very cool. In a, in, a, in a supernatural form. Oh, awesome. So transformation, the first song kind of fits. Yes. Yeah. It, it kind of, yeah. And it's, it kind of starts from there and then. Unfolds. Um, so it is a fantastic album. I mean, Every time I've listened to it, I've found something else that I love about it. Um, it's like we've talked about. There's this brooding. There's the 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 melodies. There's the stories embedded in there. I mean, every song is a true work of art. You guys have done a fantastic, fantastic job. And the question I have is, um, where? What was the inspiration? Where? What was that songwriting process like? Because your first album kicked ass it was fantastic and then this album to me transcends it is uh, i agree it's like the natural progression yeah, it's fantastic well, and so i'd like to understand the story of that creation 
Ryan? Well, um, I guess uh, the, the song ready, you might have to ask Matt uh, as far as uh, the songwriting that was done before I, I, I came into uh, the band and then did the song and then did the lyric writing. Well, the, the it's it, in, initially it was just me and Dan me and Dan wrote everything. And basically in the first demo was we had a different singer and then we had all these songs and then Ryan came in and kind of did his thing. Mm -hmm. Um, and so the, really the first full length album was, um, you know, it wasn't, I don't think it's, it's as cohesive as the new one because um, the new one, we all had, had kind of an equal part in, in writing. It was, it kind of all happened at once rather than spread out over a period of time and, and, and different people and whatever. Um, so you know, the new one definitely had a more cohesive writing process and kind of like in real time. Very cool. Almost. I mean, even though we're spread out all over the place, we, you know, we don't have a whole lot of time to get together. Um, it, it happened more cohesively than the first one. And what is that songwriting process like for you guys? Do you do, uh, I'm going to guess from what you just said that you don't do old school, kind of get into a jam room and jam. It's more, uh, each individual member coming up with their their ideas, sharing them online or uh, virtually, and then people adding in and, and doing a mix that way? Or how does that work? Well, Dan um, pretty much comes up with the riffs. And then when we get together, or, you know, he'll send me something. Or when we get together, we'll, we'll, um, we'll hash out. Sometimes he's got complete ideas and they're ready to go. And I just got to add drums to it. Um, a lot of times we just sort of, at least we did in the past before, you know, before COVID, mm -hmm. um, we would get together and we'd start with a, with a, like kind of a half to three quarter formed idea and kind of mold it into um, what it was. And it's not, it's, it's nothing. There's no, there's no, no real process. We just sort of just do it. <laughs> It's, it just comes together or it doesn't. Right, right. And uh, as, when you're building the songs uh, and thinking about the lyrical content, so Ryan, are you, do you ever work in reverse where you you have a lyrical content and, and you give it to the rest of the band and they say, oh yeah, this is great. I think I can develop this music to it. Or is it more develop the music and then you're thinking about the storylines that need to go with that song? That has yet to happen. <laughs> we we haven't we, we haven't we haven't gone from lyrics up, up through music. It's it's uh, either been through um, like a collection of lyrics I've had, uh, like you know from uh, from from time past, and I, I've gone, oh hey, like you know just some li just a set of riffs that Dan has had. Yeah. I've gone, hey, those lyrics will fit. Oh cool. Or. Um, I, I can tailor those into that or um, maybe a new riff I've just sat and listened to and listened to and just kind of had a, you know, writer's block for a however length of time. And then all of a sudden, just bam, it'll be like a ton of bricks. <laughs> all of a sudden, the lyrics will, will come to me all at once. And I'll just grab a pen and paper, just start scrambling like mad. Oh, that's cool. Well, I think that, it that's how... Um, the, the last track for uh, the, the latest album, uh, Crown of Horns. Oh, I love that song. That, that, one, that one came to me almost, almost completely uh, as is. Wow. Yeah. I, well, I think it should also be said that the first album, um, because after we lost our first singer and um, Dan called me up and said, hey, what do you think about ryan evans in the band as our singer and i'm like absolutely let's how, how can we do that um, he's like we'll make it happen <laughs> and the next thing i knew i had rough copies of all the songs that we had written with new lyrics and everything done and i was like holy shit i've never heard anything like this i was 
<laughs> I played it in my car and I just about drove off the road because I, I I was so floored by what he did with it. Oh man, it was it was I you know I was a I was an instant fan of my own band. <laughs> at that <point>. <laughs> That's <laughs> got to be a good feeling. <laughs> it was the best. I mean, yeah. Oh, fantastic! Well, uh, you know, fans is fans with bands is about the fans too. Um, so I want to open up the floor. Uh, has anybody got questions for Matt and Ryan? Yeah, I'm curious about, and I, again, I was I was listening to the new album again this week to uh, soak it in before this. And um, I do think there is a different kind of cohesion from this album. And it, it seems like the lyrical themes, there's more of a common thread. And I was wondering if that was an intentional, like, I, w- I don't know, would you say it's a concept album or are there more kind of similar themes that kind of are floating in there? I'd like to know what the, you know, kind of sources of inspiration some of those are. To say it was, to, to come right out and say, yes, it, it is a concept album would be a bit of a misnomer. Okay. However, I, I can't deny and say that it isn't, if, if, if that makes any kind of sense with the <laughs> being pretentious. It's thematic. It's, it's thematic, I, I guess, if, if that one one can kind of stretch almost into the next and um i we had to leave uh to go to the grocery store i think the other day and we were listening to it in in the uh um in the deck and i just started to laugh as we listened to it because i I all of a sudden was listening to the lyrics and was re-realizing more things about what I'd already written, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, like re- realizing things that, you know, like Together. just how, how much it, it, it already tied in. And uh, I guess I'm, I'm not, I guess I, I can't make it, it uh, make any more sense than that, <laughs> but it, it just, uh, well, perhaps like sometimes I know from writing lyrics myself that, how much is unconscious in a way when you're oh, yeah. you're choosing yeah. words and maybe later on like you it sounds like when you're listening back after some time and distance from it you can hear it in a new way of more objectively and then that's that, that like, would probably be the best way to say it yeah yeah so you you start to be like oh my mind was going there and it, i didn't even realize <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> great a- anybody else have questions definitely fair where did you guys record this? Um, this was recorded, um, actually, uh, most of it was recorded up in uh, Dan's house, our, our guitar player. Oh, cool. We recorded it up uh, upstairs. Um, he's got, uh, most of his house is made of, is, is got a lot of wood in it. So it's, it, it kind of collects the, uh, it collects the sound. Yeah. Collects, the, you know, the, uh, like the acoustics. Yep. And uh, um, the guy that uh, um, records us is, is the, uh, he used to play drums for a band called uh, um, The People's Temple and just excellent uh, tech, uh, recording technician named George Shaggedy. Oh, cool. He's the guy that's done uh, now both uh, Crew Through Records and he also did both um, Ceritas uh, EPs. Oh, cool. Awesome. And they've all, all been done on tape. Oh, so it, it's recorded on tape. It's not a digital. Yeah. Yeah. So they, they, they've all been recorded on tape to digital. Yeah. But, but it gets, it gets that nice dirty. Yeah. Sound. Very yeah, old school. Everything, everything we've ever done has been recorded at Dan's house. Uh, up in either in like the big, the big, like wide open room or, you know, just various areas around the house that get different acoustic qualities um yeah everything's done done in downtown lansing very cool uh anybody else got questions uh, i can i have a uh, two questions sure. uh, the fir- the first one is about uh what do you think about the uh, touring uh, not only i think in in North America or USA, if uh, the possibility of play and uh, classic uh, festival, I think classic like uh, Hammer of Doom, uh, Doom over Vienna, uh, and, and many, many 
or uh, festival uh, of this kind, you know, of the of these gigs in Europe. And uh, what do you think about the doom metal? Uh, no, not only European doom metal. If if they're more classical, sometimes you know, if I, if you think if you talk about the doom metal, the first one uh, you think is oh, Candlemas of, for sure, Pentagram really but uh, what do you think about the latin american and north american the other bands of uh, classic or not too classic uh, south american north american bands first uh, your future gigs in north in europe maybe south america please <laughs> and the band what do you think about it? I, I i guess we'll have to see you know as as far as uh you know um uh to you know like uh bands being lifted and that type of thing like you know uh as far as like touring and that type of thing but when when we were still um on um uh the church within he wanted to have us come over and do uh hammer of doom uh when uh um excuse me uh sirith ungol were uh oh, awesome wow were the uh um the headliner and that would have been great yeah holy the only thing that, that i think that was back in 17 and that kind of came and went and it just everything is just kind of uh, and then the then COVID happened and then so now we've got to wait for all this to kind of kind of come and go as far as touring is concerned but uh uh candle moss i absolutely love candle moss um and then as far as uh um latin uh latin american and so south american uh bands and that type of thing in the doom metal world and stuff like that i think the rest of the world's gonna have to watch out here before too long because uh i think they might they might take over before too long because i see an awful lot of uh really really good bands very very strong doom bands and uh bands of that nature coming out of that out of all of those countries instagram or this or that and i see a lot of uh a lot of a lot of bands coming from um south america so uh, i'm curious daniel what which bands are you listening to from south america because that's something i'd be interested in learning more about it, for south america well, we we have a, a a lot of bands you know uh, only from chile maybe uh, like uh, the other guy right maybe um, procession two or greeners uh, king heavy uh, uh, Marcha Funebre is a uh, really, really a lot. In Peru, uh, these guys have a very strong scene with classic band like Rey Normitano band. This band, all this band, play in the classical festival Doom Child Rise in in Germany. You know, is a is a is a new way of doom in in South America. I think of the 2000 and 2001. Cool. You know, uh, is a is is very interesting band with more 20 years. Uh, maybe you need to check <laughs> well, a little bit more for our yeah. music, but it's okay. Maybe, maybe uh, someday we can play together in, in Europe, South, uh, North Absolutely. America, South America. Yeah. Why not? I was, I, I was telling my wife, wife I, we were getting so many bands that were like in Cruthu from different like different uh spanish and portuguese speaking languages i was like i am going to have to learn how to speak those languages <laughs> cool and so that i know what they're what they're saying to me right there's just hey, so many we, i i have i have a band of king heavy uh, and play the two years ago with uh, apostle of solitude in, yep. in, mm -hmm. in europe okay it's a, i am very friend or very close friend with um cory taylor Seen uh, with and, the... Uh, he's a, the drummer is a really really f uh, fantastic guy and the other you know uh, and uh, we have a plan very important plan for uh, these guys come to to chile maybe chile and peru for play uh some gigs and uh, someday we can we will can go to to europe oh you, i'm sorry to north america okay. uh, maybe we can do that with you yeah you owe me yeah that would rule. Yeah. The props are good friends of ours. Yeah. Yeah. This Don't sounds wait. fantastic. I'm I'm loving it. Cool. Tour tour planes coming up for 2021. Yeah. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's happening. Yeah. Awesome. Very much so. All right. Uh anybody else have some questions? I was wondering about um the the changes from uh working with church within and then 
is it dystopian dogs who's involved in your release for this new release uh um well um when we got the uh um recordings done for uh for Atru, uh we sent it over to uh church within but that's when germany was really getting hit hard with covid mm -hmm. and we didn't we didn't hear back from Ali. Uh, so we did, we did, we did, we didn't hear back from the other uh, representative. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so we, and we just, we, we started figuring out that it just kind of, things weren't really happening. So we kind of decided to go with a, uh, with a smaller label for the, for, for right now until we can get, uh, a bigger label to release vinyl, hopefully here oh, in the spring. Right. I think Ali at Church Within is kind of a is kind of a one man operation, and he doesn't at, at this point in time he doesn't have a whole lot of resources um, at his disposal to yeah. um, to release the record. Um, so you know we just so so Victor from Dystopian Dogs. Um, who's been a, wonderful friend been a great friend to all of us um really cool guy yeah awesome victor is like the best and he he um he offered to put it out put it on cd and um yeah it's awesome it's um a great you know, band so or on my dad yeah so on um so you know yeah and and who knows the vinyl release is i don't know when the vinyl release will, will is coming but i don't know who's going to do that maybe victor i don't know um, I'm I'm waiting for for, for the vinyl. Uh, I've got the digital and vinyl though. Oh man! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anybody else got questions? Uh, Brandon, Matt, Corey is joined. I can't wait for it to go right next to uh, my other record right here on the wall. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else have questions? If not, no worries. I can jump in. So I I do have a question. What? with everything that's happening what from a band perspective what made you want to release it now why not wait did you guys have a discussion about the album did you have it planned to release earlier what kind of discussions did you have internally about when and how to release this oh uh, that's a good question um, I don't know. I mean, I don't think there was, you know, I, th I we thought about it, it you know, the, the, the record had been done for, for quite a while. And I think we just, we just wanted to get it out there. And, you know, I knew that, you know, obviously there wasn't going to be anything we could do, you know, during COVID to support it, to play shows, you know, all, every show has been canceled. Mm -hmm. uh, but we just, you know, in this, kind of in this society that we live in in this music scene you know you're quickly forgotten if you don't produce if you don't do something if you don't show up um so i mean that was kind of part of it but um it, we, you know we had it done we're like you know it's it, let's let's just let's just do it let's just put it out um and um so you know maybe the idea of waiting a while to put out the vinyl um maybe when things open up and we can start playing shows again, you know, that'll be a reason to get it out there, kind of give it a second life, you know? Yeah. Well, so then a follow-up question to that mm -hmm. is, you know, I don't know how much you had toured before for the first album, but now that you're becoming more established, there's more cohesion with the songwriting mm -hmm. The albums are tighter. The music is better. The lyrics are amazing. How are you? Do you want to tour with this album, or you know the next album? Hell yeah! Well, that's that's definitely. Oh yeah, that's. I mean, especially once you know once they once they get COVID under wraps, we we definitely want to get you know get our uh, our buddies back. Uh, <clears throat> all of our friends back together and get to uh get to playing and that type of thing i think everybody's uh kind of got that uh 
kind of been itching to get back out and do that type of thing. Yeah. Well, we want to tour Europe. I mean, that's kind of the, that's kind of the, our, um, our, the, the key or the, the key audience for this stuff. I mean, it's, it's, it's big and it's a lot bigger in Europe than it is here. So, you know, ideally, you know, I think we'd love to go do two weeks, you know, in Europe somewhere. Yeah. I mean, if we can never get that worked out, I mean, we haven't really, I mean, I, touring in the, in the, in the real sense of the word, we haven't really done just because, you know, we've done a, you know, like sh- small strings of shows together, but we haven't really like got in the van, so to speak. <laughs> and, um, um, but that's not to say, you know, it's not, you know, I, I mean, personally, I would love to, I mean, that's kind of what I live for, you know? Yeah. I think it'd be fun. Yeah, especially in Europe, that would be fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. South America. Yeah, we we haven't done any black flag type work. <laughs> <laughs> Get in the van. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, anybody else got questions? Uh, just to follow up, I think I don't think you guys are a band band anyway. I see you more traveling like in a stagecoach with like a. Heavy <laughs> <laughs> it would be a cooler vibe when you pull up to the club in the back. Yes. We're doing really old school. <laughs> yeah. Set the stage. Yeah. The Undertaker. Uh, that is good. Wearing capes and towels. <laughs> but you got to have only 13 inch Stonehenge monuments. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> um, I, you know, I am curious about the uh, Ryan, the, the, the stories that are behind the music. Um, Cause obviously the, the, the band's name, the album titles, um, harken back to you know, Gaelic language, um, ancient Europe, ancient, um, you know, Ireland, Scotland. Um, it, it, do you have like a family heritage or is it just an interest in that history? And, uh, the kind of eat the the mythology of that era that that drives the the story creation or what is that influence? Yes, but but it's a little bit more pretentious on on that end. <laughs> and, and and actually that that right there, Dan is actually the one who who named the group. It, it actually was was called Creation at first. Uh-huh. And we, you know, we figured that some somebody had actually named the band Creation somewhere along the line, and so the the band was called Cruthu. We just figured it that was a better. Well, Cruthu is Gaelic for creation. Yeah, right. exactly. and it's cool. It's cool. It's a very cool idea. So I love it. There was a lot of mythology in there, and, a lot of pagan. And then from there, uh, when I came when I came in the group, they they asked if I would write. Uh, uh, more uh, cosmic horror. Oh, yeah, yeah. When when I when I was writing for uh, for Ceratos, it, um I wrote strictly from uh, from uh, my own mm-hmm. from from personal uh, from you know b- b- you know th- you know things that made me sad or angry right. or you know, that that type of thing. So what I did was was I inverted that. And completely took that off the table. Oh, okay. I took me off the table completely. So when I'm singing of me or I or this or that in a Cruthu song, that's that's not Ryan. Yeah, it's it's and that's the character part of I think what I said earlier about when you listen to this album, it's almost like you're sitting around a campfire and having a storyteller. The, you know, like what Ryan just said, when he's saying me or I, it's the narrator of the story and not so much. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I mean, there was a, uh, like, uh, uh, Dimensional Collide specifically is that way for me. Like, yes, I would say. Because that whole first segment where you're just, it's almost like the, like stoner doom where you're just trance like and then for it just to like get to that point where it just kicks right that's probably my favorite song on that album awesome well if when me and dan started when me and dan started writing music for the the 
the stuff that ended up on the for, on the demo, um, we had an idea of, or I had an idea what um, what I wanted or what we wanted the lyrical content to be. Mm -hmm. And our singer, I'm Terry, uh, we just kind of let her go with it, and she kind of she kind of came at it from a more personal standpoint and and wrote some you know things that were a little political or personal, and um, so. And that's never the direction I wanted this band to go. Um, so when she left um, and then Ryan came in, I, th I thought that was a perfect time to, you know, cause you know, even the name of the band Cruthu kind of brings up ideas, you know, the, the, you know, Cthulhu, yeah. you know, the love connection, um, the cosmic horror. I'm like, that's the direction the lyrics need to be. That's what we need to be about. And, um, and Ryan just took it and ran with it and created, you know, genius essentially. Well, and, and I texted Ryan this at one point, um, outsider. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that's and I, it, yeah. I believe that because the inspiration for that was the HP Lovecraft song or story. And that was HP Lovecraft's mental vision of himself like being the outsider and just the way that ryan sings that song i can feel that you know brings it to life yeah it really does like i get that you know yeah i i felt that way i mean obviously the monster aspect of it but that's you know was hp lovecraft's vision of himself as being an outsider and I think that song really brings that to life. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Anybody else have uh, questions for Ryan and Matt? Were there songs um, that were written and developed that didn't make it to the album, or do you just write enough for the release, or you know, how does that work? Got a few. <laughs> Got a few out that that didn't make it for whatever reason. That you know, every song that they got that got recorded i mean every song really the only thing that's 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 left hanging out is our kind of riffs that never got developed i mean things that could be developed down the road for you know we got together um a, a little while ago to write and record a song for a comp that we got asked to do um and we just started you know dan had an idea from an old old song that never got developed um, and we just redeveloped that, that one. Um, but we've got, there's stuff laying around, but you know, nothing super developed, you know, we, we don't, not a lot of wasted, not a lot of wasted space. I'm always surprised how quickly it comes together for you guys. You know, like they don't be like, mm, I think I have a partial idea. And then by the end of the weekend, you have a complete song. I mean, the idea that, that when we had to do the, the, the song for this comp that we just did, coming in cold we hadn't seen each other in literally it's it'd been almost a year oh wow we hadn't almost. even seen each other in in almost a year and we wrote the song and recorded it in less than two days wow and it was done and it was good and it was and it was us you know um we, yeah we just we there's a there's a there's a cohesion there's a chemistry that we have that that just things come together quick yeah it's it's always amazing to watch mm -hmm. very cool when's this comp coming out i don't i don't know i think it was for it was for victor okay. the dystopian dogs guy that that released the record um i i want to say soon i don't know i don't have a date but um you know I don't know. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll do. Well, it'll be a while it'll before be the, the rest of the bands have, have have their songs collected as well. All right. right. We'll we'll be watching the the Facebook page, so we'll we'll stay in touch. We'll let you know. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Anybody else have any questions? No. Um. How about how are you how are you managing? you know, mental health during the time of COVID or, you know, with lockdowns and restrictions. Okay. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lots and lots. Of Cheers. <laughs> um, Salute. Yeah. Um, kind of stay sane. I, I'm a, I'm a essentially a frontline worker. So I go to work every day. 
and and battle you know assholes um (laughs) um yeah just just trying to you know trying to keep every day you know trying to trying to stay focused yeah um well i will say that having your music come out during the pandemic has been the same i mean that has been one thing that has kept me going um because you know we're locked down we can't do a lot of things can't go to any shows um and having some new music to enjoy and your album in particular being th- so damn good um that's been a that's been a lifesaver I, I'm, I'm not exaggerating about that so thank you thank you that's cool it. yeah i completely i completely agree with that it's one of the two two albums that i've listened to more than anything else this year yeah it's really good to hear guys appreciate that i mean and and the other album in that competition is pretty stiff competition because it's you know the new bungle album so that's oh, all <laughs> right oh, no. yes love yeah. it yeah. <laughs> a lot of good stuff you know, for sure. yeah that is a killer <laughs> album so uh, that would be interesting let's kind of go around the horn and find out like what would have been some um some music that you've been digging um and it can be crew through but um what have you what have you found so Matt mentioned the the new Bungle album. Um, how about Matt? Matt from Crew Three. What have What have you been listening to? Um, my tastes and what I listen to are so ridiculously varied. I mean, I I I don't listen to a lot of metal, honestly. No worries. That's, to, a, that's not a problem at all. Yeah, I listen to a lot of um, you know. I have a I I live in Petoskey and I work in Gaylord, so I have a forty five minute drive to work every day where I listen to. Um, this morning I listened to the, to Ryan's new CD and I loved it. Um, I listened to a lot of jazz and blues and, um, just whatever kind of strikes my fancy at the moment. I I mean, I, so so, um, let me, let me switch it around then. So what was one of the first albums that you ever bought with your own money? Oh boy. Um, (laughs) (laughs) um, I had the tiger. I had the tiger. 19, 1982. Whoa. Yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very nice. Yep. Freeze frame. Jake Isles. Oh, yeah. I got that one too. Oh, awesome. I remember my first CD was uh, Weird Al Yankovic Polka Party. But... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Paul, how about I'm just wondering. <laughs> Paul, how about you? What, what was your first uh, album? Um, so yeah, my first album was the cassette tape of the final countdown. Nice. Oh, wow. like, you know, 11 years old. I w- was at the mall. I was like, dad, can we go to tape world? Yeah. And there was tape world. And, uh, that was actually no, no shame there. That was my gateway into the like hard yeah. rock and metal. Was, was awesome. No, yeah. There's, There's no, no such thing as guilty pleasures, man. Oh, hell no, Maybe. man. No, Just no guilty. Yep. You know, um, but otherwise, I've been listening to like, have you heard of this band? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, so good! You gotta check him out. <laughs> the Spirit of Drift. Here to, uh, is that, yeah, yeah. Spirit of Drift. Yeah. 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 Oh, this is the uh, this is my band, Andrew. Andrick. But yeah, um, yeah w- I've been. This has been a fruitful time for me, where it's just being stuck at home or surrounded by guitars and like writing all kinds of songs. Very cool. So, nice. Very cool. Uh, Corey, we haven't, we haven't heard from you. What, what, what was your first album and what do you, what are you listening to? Well, what I'm listening to right now is the Budos band and uh, the new Paul Bear oh, for the most yes. part. So, but uh, my first 11 albums were Led Zeppelin. Oh, Wow. Nice. Right straight nice. through. I had cousin came over from Pennsylvania, and that's what he brought. He brought a tape case with thirty six tapes in it, and Led Zeppelin were the ones I latched on to. So I went and re- got them all as he left. Fantastic! <laughs> that's awesome. <laughs> uh, Eric, how about you, man? Uh, it would have been the Go Go's. We got the beat. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> on by oh really? man, oh. you still have that. Right. Yes, I do. Nice. (laughs) That's right. They're all like in this hilarious uh, water scene pyramid. (laughs) Fantastic. So, you know, but 
most people don't realize how punk yeah. they are. Okay. And then they got turned into a machine. So, oh, I, and that, that subliminally got me into punk. Belinda Carlisle played for the Germs, played drums in the Germs. I know. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. It, yes. Yeah. Very nice. What, what are you listening to now, Eric, besides Kruthu? Uh, like some experimental music collectives. Uh, but I think for the heavier stuff this year, uh, the new Lowrider album mm -hmm. was solid. Very nice. Okay. Very nice. Uh, Brandon, how about you, man? Uh, the first album I remember buying was System of a Down Steal This Album. <laughs> it's not one I revisit a lot, but I remember being really excited. I must have been 12 or 13. It nice. was, yeah, it, I had that on repeat for a long time. Uh, right on. But recently, uh, I guess pretty much since it came out, the uh, front man for uh, the Church of the Cosmic Skull, Bill Fisher, put out his first solo album this year, uh, Mass Hypnosis and the Dark Triad. And I just keep coming back to it. I buy other albums and then I put them aside and put this album back on. So cool. I really love that one. <laughs> Very cool. Um, Matt Holly, how about you? I haven't listened to anything new. I, I just really miss shows. And every day that goes by, I miss them more and more. So at this point, I would see anybody live. <laughs> <laughs> what was your first album? Uh, I was trying to think. I think it was probably an Offspring album. All so right. don't hold that against me, please. <laughs> I won't, I won't judge you. Like, like I, I, I just want to say, first of all, for those guys, those being your guys' first album, that makes me feel really <laughs> Right on. I know. That's a, uh, yeah. Because uh, I was uh, way an adult by the time those albums came out. <laughs> Matt, Matt, I was thinking the exact same thing. I'm like, oh, shit, man. I'm fucking old. Same here, Matt. <laughs> so I need to interject something real quick. Um, so they're not probably not going to say anything. So I will. Um, Eric and Matt Holly um, and I had a band a few years ago called Budahas, and we recorded oh, nice. it, and it's absolutely killer. And it it's is. coming out. It's awesome. And it's coming out soon. And um, yeah, uh, check, check that out. out. Yeah. yeah, those. Is it, we we did we did something really awesome with that one. Absolutely. And and we actually and we the one of the shows we played we played at Tip Top in Grand Rapids. It was Budahas and Kruthu, and I did double duty that ah. night. And yeah, yep. it's fun. Nice. So is it? Uh, how are we going to release band, Bandcamp or what's? Do you have a Bandcamp page? How, how's that going to go? Eric. Yes, it is Bandcamp. Uh, budahas.bandcamp.com but uh cool that's great check it out so when are we going to hear more crew <laughs> <laughs> well, we got the, uh, i have to uh, get off my ass and write some more lyrics for this song i have some melodies just have to have some more lyrics for this so song how often you, how often are you guys getting together to play well that's hey, just man. the thing once, once uh, a year, basically. <laughs> Almost, yeah. <laughs> yeah with, uh, I mean, even even without the COVID, it was uh, it was yeah. uh, pretty, spread out. pretty spread out. And then with uh, yeah. with with COVID, it's just become ridiculous. You mean more? So we, uh, it's we haven't seen each other. this last time we saw each other. It was first time in eleven months. Wow. Yeah, it was like a month ago. I mean, I live in Petoskey. Dan's in Lansing. Um, Derek, the bass players in Grand Rapids, and Ryan and Misty live in Saginaw or outside Saginaw. So we we're all like hours apart, and we just we don't have. It's not like we live next door to each other and can hang out all the time. Um, yeah, if if we didn't love uh, this band, it would not exist. Yeah, no, the distance would have destroyed lesser bands. I think for sure. Yeah, I mean that is, that's impressive. I mean, you guys basically have the Lower Peninsula quadrants covered. You know, pretty much, pretty, pretty, much. Much. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much, and that's it. Yeah, like what? What crew through zone am I in? <laughs> zone four. It's all covered. Yeah, uh, the Michigan. Well. This is funny. Oh <laughs> yeah, northern. 
Western Michigan Cruthu zone. I live here. <laughs> Well, you know, I would say what's so cool about, and because we were talking about like, why put out the record when you can tour and that kind of thing. And what I totally love about Kruthu and in general, the creative process is like, this is really, you know, it's a, a, a work of passion and love, right? And it's a pure thing. You're not doing it because you're like, okay, well, the record label wants the thing so we can go sell a bunch of merch. It's like straight up this is our talent and we're going to put this out there for people to hear. And I, I always like, that's what I love so much as a fan and as a musician, knowing that artists are just, you know, this, I'm going to express what I want with my talent and it's for you to listen and enjoy. It's a total labor love. It always has been. It's something that, you know, that we, we all love to do. And um, yeah, there's no, there's no other motivating factor behind it than just, we love, these guys are are my family and um and i i love all of them like you know like family and um yeah and if i didn't there wouldn't be a band if and if we didn't have that that motivating factor there probably wouldn't be a band it wouldn't have lasted as long as it did yeah. as it has yeah well, I feel like completely honored now because I've been able to see Saratoss. Because you know, I figured Ryan and Misty are driving a couple hours, and I figured you guys were relatively in that area, like Saginaw, Lansing. But knowing that you're yeah. coming across the Lower Peninsula, and that I got to see you guys in, at Buzzfest, I'm like, oh my god, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Rare occasion to get us all in one room, right? Yeah. Wow, that was fantastic. Um. So we're just about out of time, and I just want to. Yeah, you. In fact, you've seen uh, you've seen a band that I've been in six times, <laughs> seven times. Yeah, exactly. So, but, due, due to due to bus fest, right? Yeah, but you only had all things. He only had to take one trip. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and and the thing is, Fuzz Fest is in, is in Ann Arbor. It's like a a mile and a half from my house, so it's like no problem. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> uh, so guys uh we're just about out of time and i uh, just want to open up and see if anybody else any, has any last questions otherwise i'll throw one out there no all right so this last question is fairly controversial uh, controversial and um so you know no offense if anybody feels one way or the other but I'd like to hear your opinions. Um, pineapple on pizza? No pineapple on pizza. <laughs> okay, oh, fuck that. Okay, I got this. <laughs> I am a no f pizza eater. No fruit, no feta, no fish, no fungus. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank okay? you. And it's not. And when I say fruit, it's not just pineapple. It's tomato too. Oh, because tomato oh. makes the whole pizza soggy. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm, I'm and pineapple side. is not something you can just do on half, just like anchovies cannot be done on half of a pizza. It destroys the entire pizza. It does. Yeah. <laughs> All right. No the cheese. Yeah. So, so Ryan and Misty. What, what... Uh, or, ordinarily, I I, I kind of like it just regular. Yeah. Although. Yeah. One day I decided to try uh, pineapple just because I thought that's just so nasty. I just want to try it. <laughs> I tried it and was like, wow, I actually kind of like oh, that. Oh, a convert. However, <laughs> I, not something I want all the time. <laughs> You're fired. <laughs> Deal breaker, dude. Deal breaker. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, so, what kind of dark forces medicine? were you summoning? Yeah. <laughs> I, I do like feta cheese. No, but I do like feta cheese. I just don't like it on pizza because I think it dries it out when you cook it. It does. Yeah, it does kind of make it. doesn't it, do well on pizza. Yeah. Because I, I love feta on gyros. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Uh, and yeah, and uh, the, the fish does make it kind of salty. They're kind of like salt, like little salt bags. <laughs> really salt. <laughs> and, 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 and it's like, geez, oh, Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Paul, how about you? So I went to Michigan State as an undergrad, and you know, college is a time of experimentation. <laughs> so I did, uh, I did enjoy pineapple on pizza at that time. But, uh, you know, now I'm settled down. I got kids. You know, <laughs> I don't mind. 
kind of put old know, ways in the past. Yeah. yeah, most people don't dig it. Just straight up cheese. Awesome. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Eric, Eric, how about you? No pizza. No, no, just no pizza. <laughs> there we go. No, no pizza. Yeah. I don't. I don't Elf. want to decide. What do you eat? Not pizza. <laughs> taco. He's ta- he's a taco person. <laughs> yeah, I, we'll we'll do pineapple. Yeah. We'll do pineapple on tacos. Why not? Yeah. Hey, <laughs> live dangerously. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I like I like Paul's mantra. You know, I'll I'll try anything once, right? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> I do have well, to sound a little closer to, uh, to Eric's answer because I, I, I can't eat pizza all that much. I, I don't digest it very well. <laughs> uh, so Eric, but Eric's in Maine and he lives right on the Atlantic Ocean. So he can literally put his hand in the ocean and pull out fish or lobster right there. Oh, right. Yeah. So why bother with yeah. pizza? Why bother with exactly. pizza? Yeah. That's, that, yeah. You can have a lobster roll. I mean, come on. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Brandon, how about you? Uh, I don't really like pineapple at all, but I love pizza enough that if that's <laughs> all that's available, I'll eat it anyway. Yeah. Right I kind of feel you right, right on. Nice. Oh. It, Good and uh, Corey. Uh, you're going to hate me, but pineapple. Yes. Really? Oh, yeah. wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Yeah. And uh, Matt Holly, how about you? Uh, nope, no pineapple. Wow, that, that's wow. a down vote for me. <laughs> I like you. Awesome. Well, uh, everyone, thank you guys so much for joining me. Um, it's great to see you, even if it's virtually. Uh, it's still great to see your faces. Thank you again for being a part of this. And Matt and Ryan, thank you so much for the music. Fantastic. You're welcome. Thank you, Chuck. Yeah. Thank you, Chuck. And Misty, I, I can't you, see you off the side of the thing, but thank you for being a part of this. Too. Yeah. Sorry. Hi, Misty Hand. Hand in every once in a while. <laughs> hey, how you doing? <laughs> when you have the same Zoom, it like feeds back in the room. Right. So. Right. All right. Well, yeah. Thank you guys. Hi, guys. Thank you guys again. Yep. Good to see all you guys. Really appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thanks, guys. See you guys. Thanks again. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks again to Matt and Ryan from Crew Through, along with fans Corey, Brandon, Daniel, Eric, Paul, Matt, and Matt for joining me on this episode of Bands with Bands. Head over to Bandcamp and check out Crew Through's latest album, Athru Krutha. This stellar doom album is magnificent from start to finish. See the show notes for all the details and links. These are tough times for everyone in the creative industry, such as music. Your support of live streaming, purchasing music, and merchandise is critical. If you can help out your local artists, please do. If you are in the Michigan area, consider following the Playing in the Detroit Area Tonight Facebook page. It is a place for fans and bands to support each other and share our combined love of music. Thank you all so much for listening. Be sure to hit subscribe on your favorite podcast service to get each and every episode of Fans of Bands. Spread the word by rating the show and leaving a comment. We want to hear what you think. You can keep in touch by following us on social media. This is a Life in Michigan production. Until next time, be well and kick out the jams. <laughs>